three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome back to Child of the Kingdom. Welcome to COTK Week. Yes, you guys are in for an amazing treat. This week, every day of the week, every weekday, let me not set myself up and play myself, every weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you guys are going to get a video. You guys are going to get a video every day of the week. This week, this is the time and I'm really excited. I'll be sure to watch every single day. Thumbs up the video. Subscribe right now so you don't miss out. Thumbs up, I already said that. Comment down below, tell me how excited you are, and let's get into it, shall we? So I decided that we would kickstart C-O-T-K week, Child of the Kingdom week, <laughs> by talking about relationships. So if you're new to my channel, you probably don't know this, but I have never spoken about relationships on my channel, so this is pretty special for me. This is a huge moment for all of us. COTK squad. Our relationships, you know, have such a heavy influence on over who we are. And in order to align ourselves with everything that we've ever wanted, to align ourselves with God's will, to align ourselves with the destiny that's been written for us, we need to position ourselves in a certain kind of way. A lot of the times, girls or guys will kind of push away their Christian life because their Christian life is just one aspect of their life. So they, you know, let that sit over there. And they go ahead and date whoever they want to date. They date because it's fun, they date because it's interesting, you get to meet new people, you get to do all that kind of fun stuff. Dating the right person is very important. Now I'm not Dr. Phil. I am very young myself. I'm only 20 years old. So I don't know anything about men, about women, about that world. I don't know. And I'm not going to sit on here and talk about, you know, I know all about men. So when a guy does this, it means this. I don't know. You know what I mean? All guys are different. All girls are different. I can't really speak on everyone. What I can say, experience here, hear, hear this, okay? Talking to, dating, uh, giving your time, investing time into the wrong person is only detrimental to yourself. As much time as you invest into anyone, if it's intimate or if it's personal and if it's in a loving, intimate way and you're investing that part of you into another person and you know that person isn't good for you, that person isn't living for God, that person is not on fire for Christ, that person isn't pushing you towards Christ, it's only going to be detrimental for you. You know, sometimes you are missionary dating and you don't even know that you're doing it. Missionary dating is basically going out and dating people who are not saved in hopes that through dating them, they will be saved. Missionary dating. Um, so that's a no. We're going to pass on missionary dating. Should I give personal experiences, you guys? I'm not a serial dater. I'm only 20. I'm not going to sit on here and be like, <laughs> you know. From the moment you realize that the person is not on fire for God and chasing and running this race as much as you are, that is the moment you need to guard your heart and you need to evaluate what kind of tie you're building with that person. Because this is what's going to happen. You're going to push that thought in the back of your mind like, oh, he's into, he's not as into God as I am, but I'll get him to pray. I'll get him to, you know, I'll get him to do it. Don't worry. I'll get him to read the Bible with me tomorrow. Mm, I'll invite him to my church next week. It's not a big deal. You're going to be focused on that person, giving to that person, investing into that person, getting attached to that person, missing that person, and you form this bond with them. And then eventually, because we serve a faithful God, praise him, eventually God is going to be like, um, I didn't ordain this, so I'm not going to bless it. And you're going to be left in a very unfruitful relationship. And then you're going to be like, why is my relationship not working, God? Why is my relationship not working, God? And God's going to be like, because I didn't bless this, because this is not an equally yoked situation. I taught you better. Remove yourself from it. Period. And you're going to have to remove yourself from it because we serve a very powerful God. You're going to have to remove yourself from their relationship and you're going to be hurt. You're going to feel strange because you were so attached to that person and now you can't speak to them anymore. You're not hearing about what's going on in their life anymore. They're not telling you goodnight anymore and etc. etc. You know what I mean? You're just... Uh, mm. My advice to you brothers and sisters is to just don't play yourself. That's been seriousness and I know that sounds really mean and kind of like harsh but don't play it yourself if you know this person is not running their race for God don't attach yourself to them guard your heart sisters guard your heart brothers because this is what's going to happen you just dismissing the fact that their Christ likeness isn't really present okay is only detrimental to you you can't save people through dating them you need to, even if that person maybe is on their way to kind of crawling to Jesus, back up and give them the space to do so. 
you know why do you need to force up force up into someone's life that's not the way that this should be back up and let them just serve god let them have that complete space with jesus if in the future they're ready and if in the future they choose the lord and they come to the light and they grow into a man or woman of god and you see that and they come to you and you see that they are ready to be in a relationship then you can pursue that but you need to do what you know is best for yourself but also what's best for them and sometimes attaching yourself with people isn't always the right thing to do but now i want to just talk about when you're dating the wrong person now unequally yoked doesn't always mean that this isn't even about being equally yoked or not. I'm just going to dabble into this a little bit. Relationships are such an extensive topic. I can't possibly talk about everything. But when you're with somebody and you're not equally yoked with them, it doesn't always mean that they're atheist, Muslim, Buddhist, something other than Christian. Sometimes they're Christian, but they're just not running the same race as you. They're very lukewarm. They believe in Jesus, but they're not living and pursuing righteousness, etc., etc. Equally yoked, unequally yoked means that you just aren't on the same page. It doesn't mean that you aren't in the same religion. You could be with a Christian man or a Christian woman and still be unequally yoked with them, okay? So don't be fooled by that God in the bio because don't play yourself okay so we've spoken on equally yoked unequally yoked and all that kind of stuff i want to talk about now being with the wrong person okay let's just talk about that being with the wrong person dismissing the entire fact that they aren't running for jesus the way you're running you know you're like this and then they're just chilling D dismissing that let's talk about that we're going to go into acts chapter 2. So Acts chapter 2, it talks about when the Holy Spirit comes. I'm going to read it really quickly. So it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone was present. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this capability. That was the NLT version. I like the NIV version. I'm going to read that to you guys, but I'm going to dissect it. So first, as soon as we jumped into the chapter, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Can we just take that in? On the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost came, when the... Yeah, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, all with one accord in one place. If you're dating the wrong person, you guys are unequally yoked. He's chilling, doesn't go to church. She's out here clubbing every weekend, doesn't go to church. Even forget church. Don't have a relationship with God, doesn't pray, isn't spiritually mature, can't help you grow. You two are not on one accord. You're not pulling from each other's strength because there's literally nothing to pull from here. Your iron is sharp, their iron is dull. So there's nothing. If anything, you're giving, 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 and then you're going to be dull. You know, you're not in one accord. You're not on the same page here. You're spiritually also, you're just not in one accord. In one place. Let's go on. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them like cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. So let's go back to the beginning where it said, and it filled the house where they were sitting. If you don't position yourself in life, just generally, in the right house, if you're not sitting beside that right person, are you sitting in the house where you can hear the sounds of heaven? Are you sitting in the house where you can see the tongues of fire, like cloven tongues of fire? Are you in one accord in the right house with the right person? We talk about relationships. We talk about, thank you, Lord. We talk about relationships. We talk about love. We talk about all these types of different things. And we talk about, you know, dating, uh, like dating in purpose. And, you know, you guys have to do Bible studies together. And you, okay. At the end of the day, I need to be with someone whose destiny is so aligned with God and so alike to mine to the point where the only source of any answer that we have is through Jesus Christ. I need to be with someone who's sitting in that right house, the correct house. Then I can come and sit in the house. We can be in one accord, sitting in one place, and we can hear the sounds from heaven. Verse number two says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So if you're sitting beside the wrong person, my friend, their house is far away from this house, okay? You are not in one accord, in the wrong house, in the wrong suburb, in the wrong zip code, okay? You're not hearing the sounds from heaven. You're not being filled with that Holy Spirit because you are too far away 
in not in one accord with the wrong person in the wrong house. So you're literally missing out on this amazing Holy Spirit that is so powerful that it fell upon every single person in that house. But because, you know, he's teen light skin and he's just so cute and he, the way he kisses me just makes me have butterflies and because she's so thick and she just is so cute and she's just so this and she's just so that. All of that, all that worldly stuff is worth missing. The Holy Spirit falling upon you. You're in the wrong house, my friend. You're in the wrong house. Okay, you need to be real with yourself. I've had to do it. Many other people have to do it. You sit back, you look at your life and you say, am I in? <laughs> The right relationship am I sitting with the right person does this person push me to God when was the last time this person made me feel like they were Christ like made me feel like their anointing kind of poured out onto me made me feel like there was something there more than just he's fine and she's cute when was the last time that person poured into me spiritually when was the last time that person prayed for me you know what I mean take a step back and say is this working out and if it's not Pack your bags and get out of that zip code, honey. Get on the next train, get to the right place because the day of Pentecost is coming. The Holy Spirit is about to fall on a house. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. I know you guys are like, that you were not expecting that. I know, I had to just <clears throat> pounce on you. <laughs> and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, fully come, that means that it's not on and off. It's a process, okay? It's not boom, no Pentecost. <clears throat> Pentecost no fully means that there was a progression right you have time <laughs> this is what I'm trying to explain just because you're with someone now doesn't mean you're going to be with them forever doesn't mean you have to be with them forever doesn't mean that like I said what if your day of Pentecost is at 35 percent you still got time, honey. If, even if it's at 99.9%, you have time to step back, look at your life and say, you know what? I'm not missing my blessing. I'm not missing the train that's leading me to my destiny. I'm not missing Jesus. So I'm not going to align myself and position myself in a house where I'm not in one accord with this person. We're not okay. And the, the neighbors down the street are experiencing the Lord and experiencing the Holy Spirit because they felt those convictions and paired themselves with the right person. I'm here sitting beside this deadbeat and I'm not feeling the sounds from heaven. I'm sitting beside this cute guy who just is just cute. That's all he has to offer. And I'm not seeing the sounds from heaven. I'm not seeing the cloven tongues like fire. Like, is it really worth missing out? Because your bed's warm at night? Is the, the cloven tongues like fire, the sounds from heaven, our heavenly father has produced something and dropped just a little bit, a 0.0.0002% of his glory. Is it worth missing out because your bed's warm at night? Is it worth it? It isn't. Make that decision into your life. Fully come. Don't wait until the day of Pentecost is fully come and you have regrets and you were in the wrong house and you missed out. Position yourself and align yourself where you can hear the sounds from heaven. Sometimes that means that you're in the house, you're not sitting beside anyone, any significant other. You're sitting in the house with your family. You're sitting in a house with your church. You're sitting in a house and you're fellowshipping. You know, it's not always about where's the boo, where's the bae, where's my husband, where's my wife. You know what I'm trying to say? You guys, I just, I really just want to stress that we are young. I'm very young and personally, I'm not in a relationship right now. That's probably the best decision I could have made for myself. The absolute best decision right now that I could have made for myself. Now, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's gonna happen next week but I know that right now I'm positioned where I can hear the sounds from heaven and no human is responsible for deterring my focus and shifting my vision and shifting my eyesight so that I can't see the cloven tongues like fire I'm positioned in that house so that if Pentecost was to come and the Holy Spirit was to lay onto this household I would receive that is the priority here position yourself where you can receive position yourself where you can hear from God see the cloven tongues like fire and hear the sounds from heaven position yourself focus on that that's why they say seek the kingdom because you're not positioning yourself in the house that has the most cute girls or positioning yourself in the house that has six foot tall and higher guys position yourself where you can see the sounds from heaven seek the kingdom and everything else shall be added on to you get in the right house urgent quick ASAP you will sit down and eventually God will seat someone else right next to you who you can be in one accord with the focus is not relationship it's your salvation your relationship with God comes before any other person Understand that, take that in and just, you know, let that be comforting to you. 
I don't, I'm not dating anybody. I'm not crying at night time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not the saddest thing in the world to be single. It's not a curse to be single. Because they really think about it. You're not really single. You're sitting in a house full of everyone else just waiting for the Holy Spirit. Seek the kingdom and everyone else, everything else, everyone else, every blessing else, every job else, every money else, everything else will be added on to you. I know that wasn't grammatically correct, but you guys understood what I was saying. So... I know I caught you guys off guard. You guys were not expecting that. I hope you guys all enjoy this video. If you are a single girl, keep sitting. Boy, keep sitting. If you're with someone, take a step back. Look at your house and say, who am I sitting beside? Is this the right person? Can I see the sounds? Can I see the fire? Can I hear the sounds? Am I still connected to God? Is this helping me just hear better and better? Is this helping me hear worse and worse? Is it too much static beside this person that I can't hear from God? Can I hear better because I'm with this person? Et cetera, et cetera. Evaluate and think. The day of Pentecost has not come yet, luckily. It's not fully come, so make your decisions before it has arrived. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope that you guys all enjoyed. C-O-T-K week. Woo! <laughs> I'm so excited. You guys are about to be in for an amazing treat. I'm going to have videos up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you guys really soon. Bye.